Um, Stuart Nash. Thank you very much, Mr Chair. Mr Chair, I want to start by looking at um, offenders to whom the Act applies. Now, this starts at section 6, who is a registrable offender. Um, 61A is someone sentenced to imprisonment, we get that. But part B says sentenced to a non-custodial sentence and made subject to a registration order. So basically someone who has not gone to prison, but the courts make a decision that they should be subject. And if we go to section 8, it says, the, and I quote, the court may, may, and I don't know what constitutes may, but the court may order that a person must be placed on the register and must comply with the reporting obligations of this Act if the court is satisfied that the person poses a risk to the lives or sexual safety of one or more children or of children generally. Well, the first question is, what judge would actually order a non-custodial sentence if he or she thought that a person, if a person posed a risk to the lives or sexual safety of a child? Um, I think that anyone that poses a risk to the life of a child should be in jail anyway, but let's not argue about that. But what happens, Mr. Um, Mr Chair, is the judge must consider 10 variables when determining whether to put a person, whether to make a registration order. And the, the, I'm not going to list all the variables, but they're under um, Section 8, Part 3, and there are 10 of them. And the thing that concerns me about this, Mr Chair, is that they are subjective to the point where I think there may end up being judicial inconsistency here. So you're going to get a so-called hanging judge that says, OK, I can't order you to jail because of past precedent, but you're going to go down because I'm considering all of these. And the thing that concerns me about this, Mr Chair, is a lack of objectivity. I think what the bill should have done has been a lot clearer in determining who actually comes under a registration order if there is a non-custodial sentence. So that is something that I think will have to be um, sorted out in the courts. And what I would be loath to see is people appealing their, um, their registration order simply because they felt it was unfair. So we get another layer of, um, of process or, or court there. What I would all now the other thing I'd like to talk about, Mr. Chair, is the child sex um, the child sex offender register itself. Now, this is the commissioner of police. He or she is the person uh, or the position that is responsible for this. Um, but the interesting thing, if we go to um, section 10, the administration of the register, section 10.2, it says, before making significant operational decisions about how the register is administered, the commissioner must consult with the chief executive of the Department of Corrections. Again, what constitutes a significant operational decision? I'm assuming what will happen, Mr Chair, is that the Commissioner of Police and the CEO of Corrections will sit down at the point that this register comes into, um, comes into law and have a memorandum of understanding of what constitutes a significant operational decision so there is no grey area there. So they have sorted it out. They know when the, when the Commissioner must consult with the CEO. But again, when we have subjective words like significant operational decision, it does allow for grey areas that are open to contestability. Um, if we go down uh, to section 10.3, it says, for the purpose of the administration of the register, the Commissioner may appoint one or more police employees. But Mr Chair, this comes back to the point where um, uh, will the information get out there? Now, this is one or more employees for the administration of the register is a different definition for those who are responsible for implementing or monitoring the people on the register. Because it actually says in the Act, Mr Chair, that um, uh, under Clause 25, that a person who delivers a report, because I'll, I'll come to reporting soon, but can go into any police station designated by the Commissioner. Now, there are 281 police stations in New Zealand at the moment. So theoretically, what could happen, probably practically actually, depending on where the sex offender lives, the Commissioner will designate that that person must go to make their report to the closest possible police station, which makes sense. So there's another 281 people brought in. Now, Mr Chair, I would never, ever um, uh, question the integrity of the police or correction staff. But let's be honest about this. If, if a police officer or a corrections officer finds out through dealing with this register or someone on the register that they live next door or two doors down to a niece or nephew or something, human nature dictates that information will get out there. So when David Clendon mentioned that this will leak, we know it will leak. 
because that is human nature, and that is something that concerns me. Mr. Chair, Mr. Chair, Mr. Chair, Mr. Chair, Mr. Chair the Honourable Judith Collins. Thank you.